What's up guys, Chris here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this Google Form using Angular and Firebase. So this is one of the Google Forms that allows users to submit their challenges for a certain program they are doing. So I basically kind of copied it out and then built its HTML and CSS and then we are going to hook it up with Angular Reactive Forms and Firebase and then add some functionality to send user to send a user an email that contains their submission details. So we are going to learn about things like validations. So see, let's say a user will submit, let's say a user submitting has an email place, truly.com. And then of course they are called Christ Truly, who is me by the way. Then let's say they are, they are linking to the link to a challenge that's hosted on www.google.com slash my work. But this can be anything. But we are going to to build out that we are going to build out validation for all this. And uh, we are going to create custom validators. For example, this one for the for the URL, we are going to see how to create this from scratch. Then something else that we'll learn about. Notice that when you're submitting for a cloud challenge, this field becomes becomes not required. So when you're submitting for Android, then you have to provide for a, a GitHub link. So this way, so this way, we are able to like reevaluate the form validations at runtime so pretty cool to learn so let's see if we can submit for uh, if, we can, if we can submit our github so dot com so I should say quite truly cool up. let's say that's where our app is then the validation requires a protocol so if I could put http Okay, so cool. So we can add feedback. So let's say, hey, thanks for the challenge. For the challenge was our hard one, but we cracked it in the first place. So let's see if I fix my grammar here. So from there now, a user can submit this form. Let's see. So when they submit the form, basically a couple of things happen. If we look at our Firestore right now. So what happens is we get a collection, a collection, a collection created in our database and then a document written with all the details we submitted from the form. So from here, when the data gets submitted to Firestore, we have a cloud trigger that sends out an email that contains uh, the submission details to the person who submits. So you will notice this. You will notice this with some forms. They have an option where they send you a copy of the response. You can like edit it from like, from there. But I just wanted to put it in such that I could show you how to work with code functions and the possibilities that's possible. So if I could check my email right now, notice that I have a new email. So the email has basically the feedback I added, and you could basically wire this to do anything you want of course you can be more creative and design the email much better but i'm going to show you a process of doing all that so yeah i think that's going to be it we can so yeah that's it that's that's going to be the project we are going to be using materialized css and uh we'll deploy it to netlify so we're going to be able to achieve this kind of material effect using materialize, of course. And this way, if we, if we build a Google form like that, like this, then uh, we can easily apply into Google and basically show them some of our work. They will, they will immediately tell that we know everything about the company, their design principles, and then we are going to get hired. We are going to have an upper, upper hand over other applicants. So let's learn how to create this. 
because the possibilities after this are a lot. <sighs> so let's start. So I'm going to open up my text editor. I'm using VS Code, but you can use any text editor of your choice. So here, I'm going to create a new project using the Angular CLI. If you don't have that, you're going. If you don't have the Angular CLI, you're going to need Node.js. So download that on your machine. Then when you download Node.js, it comes with npm. So you use npm to install the Angular CLI. So you will find yourself writing a command like npm install minus g at Angular. It's like at Angular slash CLI. So you will install this. If you're on a Mac or Linux, you have to do sudo. But if you're on Windows, you don't have to do that because there is no sudo on Windows. So this way, you will have the Angular CLI and then you can run the nginu command. nginu. Let me call the project. <laughs> project. Cool. Just generic one. So it's going to go ahead and scaffold out the app. So it's asking us, do you want to try it? Okay, fine. We might want to scale the project. CSS or SAS. Let's keep it CSS because we want to keep this as simple as possible. Okay, so once that's done, it initializes Git and sets up a Git project for you. Let's open it in our text editor as a project. So I called it project. So I need to like find it here. Project. Yeah, that's the Angular project one. So we open it and we have a basic Angular setup. I'm not sure about why my icons are not like really working, but now we if we if we run ng serve ng serve dash dash open if we, if we did everything correctly then we should be able to serve the the default app that the Angular CLI creates for us. So it's going to Band our project and then to serve it on port 4200. Is that 4200? No, 4200 correct English. So the Angular app is set up correctly. Now we need to install a module for Firebase. We need to set to install Materialize. So let's get the Materialize CSS. Materialize CSS. Let's go to the website, getting started. And we need to pick these two, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript CDN links. So we need to go to our index.html file in our source directory. So index.html, there you go. Then in the head, we add this. Then the next thing we are going to need will be, will be the, the, oh, the icons. Because we are going to need to create this here, you have to see in the corner. So to get the icons, we have to, let's see, can get the CDN, okay, cool. We need to get this CDN thing also. Let's also add it. Okay, let me group my CSS. Okay, okay. Then we are going to need to use the Roboto font as that's what uh, our material we need to use. So getting the Roboto font, just search for it, Roboto font, cool. So if it opens up in Google, click on it, it's going to bring you on a page like this. So what you do, you select this font and then you kind of get the CDN also. So let's also add it like that. So it is going to rerun the project. Now if we check our, if we check, let's see. Let's see if we check again our browser, our project. Notice that we have the material design styling, meaning meaning materialize is set up correctly. Now, what we need to do next is we are going to use a module to bind Firebase and, and Angular called Angular Fire 2. So if you could search for it, Angular Fire 2, then uh, let's just open it up the github so we need to install this so this basically provide bindings for uh, 
for Firebase to connect with uh, all the other GitHub products. So you can hook up authentication, database, storage. So we need to run that. I'm going to open up a new terminal session. So as it installs, we want to yeah, let it install. So as it goes on, let me see if I can get icons here set up. This doesn't look great to me. So if I do icons, just see, should get some icons. I have VS code, VS code icons set up, but I don't know why they're not uh, reflecting today. I, let me install this. Maybe it could help. Then I'm going to also okay, choose this. Uh, okay, we can work with that. Looks better. Okay, still installing Angular Fire 2. Now, if we go to the app module, the app component HTML, let's first clear out this uh, default markup because we need to start from the absolute start. So, just put an H1. Uh, so, start. Cool. So, it has finished installing Angular Fire 2. Now, what we need is to find a way of configuring our project and Firebase. So, go to console.firebase.google.com. Just get it here, console.firebase.google.com. So, with, you're going to need an, a Google account, but when you have an email account set up, basically, you will have a, a, Firebase, a Firebase account set up. So, come to this, then you'll be... You will need to create a project, so click create project. Let's call it project. <laughs> but you, you guys basically have better ideas than I do here. So you need to change this. It's not necessary, but you should change it because it's going to be used by Firebase as a generic. Uh, your project name, like when you're sending emails, it can come. Oh, why is everything taken? So this, it will basically show to your users. So it's, it's good you plan it out well. So you need to say set up analytics, not right now. Just need to focus on building the project. Then it's going to go ahead and uh, create the project. So as it does, as it does, so the Angular Fire 2 module comes with the uh, a module called Angular Fire, and that's the one we use to bind our project to the Firebase. So we we add it to our import section. It's called Angular Angular Fire Angular Fire module. Okay. So the Angular Fire module, we need to import it. So import. Add Angular Fire module, Angular Fire module from okay, let's see, at Angular, Angular Fire, okay, like that. Then on it, we call a method called initialize app, and then this takes in a Firebase configuration options that we are going to get in a minute. So if we come back to our project, it's created, click on it. Then you're going to have to click on develop and go to database. So here we need to like set up our database. So what you need to do is come and let's see if we're looking for Firestore. Okay, create database. Click create database, then choose start mode. So start mode will basically allow us to develop an application and then run it uh, and allow users that are not logged in to be able to add data here. If you choose this other mode, then you will need users to be authenticated by default to be able to add data to the Firestore. But for the application needs, we really don't need users to log in. So click that, then it's going to like create your file store, set it up with all the resources it needs, and when it gets done, we'll continue. So now the database is set up correctly, what we need to do is go to 
Let's go to project overview. Then we choose add an app. So click on web, then you need to name your app. So let's say web app. You be ha you will have like mobile apps or different platforms. So a web app name will do for Angular project here. Yeah. So click that, then it's going to create, and then what we are interested in are these details. So copy everything in the Firebase config object, then come back to our application. So this is what we need to pass in, pass in here. Yeah. So we can basically do that. Then here since is complaining, can say fix everything that we can. So it's going to be set up like that. But most of the times you're going to find uh, all of these details will be in the environment file. So let me copy them out, bring them to environment, the environment file, and then paste them there. Then it's complaining that our linting, let's see, fix everything. It's failing too. Oh, okay. We have to pull it. Okay. Then, of course, it needs a key. So let's call it Firebase. And then that will be the file here. That looks good. So here we need to use the environments file, environment.firebase. So if we did everything correctly, then we should have the app set up fine. If we check the browser, we the app is still running fine. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Uh, in the next video, we will set up the markup, add the CSS, make our design look so great, hook in reactive forms, submit the Firebase, and then we'll continue from there. So thank you, for, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you're new here, please like and subscribe, so you get uh, notifications when we post new videos, and see you guys later. Thanks for watching.